Welcome back to an introduction to the basic concepts of maintenance and reliability. In this lecture, we are going to understand what is reliability block diagram and what is the concept of reliability in series and reliability in parallel. Reliability is a concept that is not only applied to machines as a whole, but also to machine components. So in a complex machine or system, reliability will be the combined reliability of its parts. For example, a vehicle's reliability will actually be the combined reliability of its engine, gearbox, suspension, and so on. Similarly, the reliability of an HVAC unit will be the combined reliability of its compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator. The concept of reliability block diagram comes into answer how does reliability of components combine with each other? Do you add all the individual reliabilities? Do you subtract them or multiply them or divide them? The problem statement that a reliability block diagram addresses is how do you calculate the reliability of a whole from its parts? The block diagram itself is not at all difficult. As the name suggests, it is simply a diagram of connected blocks, where each block represents a part or component of a machine or system, while the diagram as a whole represents the machine itself. The diagram expresses the interconnectivity of parts inside the machine, which decides how the combined or resultant or the overall reliability will be calculated. There are two basic types of configurations in which the parts, components, or blocks in the reliability block diagram can be connected. They can either be in series, which is the simple chain of blocks as shown, or in parallel. In parallel, two or more blocks are connected to the same block. Series configuration represents that if any part fails, the system will fail. Parallel configuration represents that failure of one part won't fail the system because the parallel part will take over. Therefore, Parallel parts and components in a system or machine increases the reliability of a system by adding redundancy. The most obvious example of series configuration in reliability is that of an automobile. The engine, transmission, and suspension are all connected in series with each other from a reliability perspective because failure of any one component causes failure of the automobile. Even if engine and suspension are okay, but transmission fails, the car can't be driven. This is the concept of parts in series. It is important to highlight here that when we say series, we are not referring to how the parts are physically connected with each other. We are saying series connection from the perspective of how their reliability is combining. In series reliability, you get the resultant reliability by multiplying the reliability of all parts. So if the engine has a reliability of 95%, transmission has a reliability of 90%, and suspension has a reliability of 88%, the resultant reliability will simply 
be the product of reliabilities of these three blocks in series. It will give us a resultant reliability of 75.24%. Now consider an SVAC system. It comprises compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator. These components by design have a series configuration because the HVAC system will fail if any one of these components fail. The resultant or combined reliability of the system will be the product of reliabilities of each of these individual parts. However, let's say that the system has two compressors such that each compressor can take the load of the whole system to keep the system running. This is how a parallel configuration of compressors work. Now the system won't fail unless both the compressors fail. The formula for calculating reliability of parallel block is shown. So if both compressors are same, and have a reliability of 90%, the resultant reliability of their parallel combination will be 99%. So it is clear that the reliability of a parallel combination of parts will be higher than individual components, which is easily understandable because the combination has allowed for redundancy. It is important to highlight here that the formula we used in this calculation is for what is called a hot standby. There is also another type called cold standby, which we will discuss in a later lecture. For now, what you need to remember is that hot standby is to be taken as the default parallel configuration if the problem is statement hasn't stated the type of a standby. Now once the reliability of parallel components has been calculated separately, we can multiply the reliability of all components just like we did in simple series configuration to get the overall or resultant reliability. In our example, it comes out to be 71.35%. In this way, a reliability block diagram allows you to visualize whether machine components are in series configuration or parallel configuration. It allows you to make calculations of the overall reliability of the system accordingly. With this, we conclude this discussion.